We are here at Immersion 4, Swiss startup based out of Lausanne, created in uh, 2017 and uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with energy, but dealing with data. So I'm not going to speak alone. I'm going to involve you. I know this is late. I know we are getting our set of tire. We're getting at the end of the afternoon. But uh, what is data? Please, guys, don't leave me alone. Don't be shy. What is data? Energy. What's data? What is data? OK, effectively, data is energy. When we look at today, the energy consumption of data centers, we're talking to be, in 2025, it will be 20% of the world energy, 10% of the greenhouse, and over 3 trillion liters of water. And when we look at really what data center is all about, when we look at the statistic, for example, what are the data center PUE, power efficiency, that we have in Europe, everyone is talking about 1.2, one, 1 1.3. But when you look about what the EU is saying in terms of analogy and through Paolo Bartoldi, we realize that, in fact, the data center efficiency is the more than 1.7, 1.8. And PUE, what that means. Are we talking about equivalent ITU, equivalent IT load? That's also kind of the measurement we need to take into consideration. But during this time, the concept remains exactly the same. Imagine, gentlemen, that what I have here in my end is a cup of champagne. And if I want to cool off that coupe of champagne, said coupe de champagne, what do I do? I'm going to cool off the entire room or just the champagne itself? Nobody drink champagne? <laughs> well, if you're cooling off the champagne itself, it's immersion four. If you're cooling off this entire room, it's a data center. So the effort of transformation of just cooling the little hot spot somewhere, okay, it's a lot when we realize what data center is all about. This is why data centers have raised floor, high ceiling, chemical fire suppression, in row, air circulation, hot aisle, cold aisle. And the air is an insulator. The liquid is a thermal conductor. So why are we doing this nonsense? Why do we have created this? I'm part of the problem, 58 years old. I was one of the guys also who cooled electronic with air because we didn't know any better. So what we have done, we're talking about creating a sustainable world where energy is at stake where we have to reconsider the way we use it, and we can have exactly the same service from data produced by electronics using the energy at the right place. Just let's power the IT load, powering the electronics, and not powering the data center. So if we look at what we have today, that's a data center. Full data center, full infrastructures, no matter which one and what type of data we're talking about. No matter if we speak about AI, machine learning, deep learning, private, public, or I would say colocation cloud. Or here, if we're talking about warehouse, because crypto mining. Those, at the end of the day, are just two buildings. What we have created as Immersion 4 is a universal architecture where basically we have the data center technology which can be mixed as well with crypto mining solution called IPC miners. And everything is into the liquid. Exactly the system that we have over there. Imagine for you that if you look at the system that we have just right there to cool off this appliance here, we have to keep an ASHRAE 20C in this room just to be sure that the hotspot in that server over there in our liquid, okay, need to be cooled off. That's what the data center is all about. Well, we can just put the data center in the liquid, maintaining this liquid at the right temperatures. We can stay in bedding suit or whatever we want to be in, okay? and having the electronics to be cooled off and producing data the way it should be without the energy consumption related to a data center infrastructures. That's basically what we're offering here. Well, we can distribute it. Data center is just four walls and a roof. You can just put those data centers within any buildings and connecting those buildings like we were at the beginning of internet. You're the regulators. When you created internet, when we started, we said the first voice coding systems, we had CEOs. 
and everything was in CEOs. And then now, you find our set the bus in a street cabinet because it's fully distributed. That's what data centers should be because now we have the same problems, especially due to digitalization. We need to process data and to collect data where they are produced. And traditional air-cooled data centers doesn't allow that to be in any urban environment. Ratio, cost of square meters, cost of infrastructures, and I'm pretty sure none of you want to live in an apartment close to an HVAC. Well, how do we solve that? It's called immersive cooling. Put everything electronics into the liquid, being able to use a liquid to liquid exchange in order to be able to collect the calories from the electronics and then to reuse those calories within the building or to evacuate them. But the effort of transformation, the cost of energy, the use of energy for those electronics to be cooled off become based on eco-conservation. The best energy you save is the one you don't use. 20% of the world energy in data centers, it's 1,800 nuclear plants at one gigawatt. If I make a ratio in terms of the technology we have together, and if I apply the immersion flow technology to all data centers in the world, I will basically reduce the energy consumption of data center instead of 20% to 4%. That's 1,500 nuclear plants at one gigawatt. It takes 10 years, best case scenarios, to build a nuclear plant. So what are we talking about? Two billion people, plastic bike, it's okay. Eight billion people, plastic bike is not okay. Eight billion people, 20% of the world energy burned by data center is not okay. 2035, according to the Swiss authority, data centers are gonna be using the entire energy here in Switzerland. What about the 60 Swiss, 60 Swiss million people? I'm one of them. And by the way, there's the same problem all around the world. So we can have an infrastructure like this, converted data based into energy, being used within any building, and having, I would say, the power of electronics to be done on the way in order to be able to reuse those energy and to back into energy. So what we have in addition to that, we have created a business model in order to produce our system based on circular economy. It's called I4 IBM, Immersion for Industrial Business Model. And this business model allows to build labs and production centers all around the world. What is the beauty of it? Well, what is producing data is electronics. There is servers, but there is IOTs. There is many, many fashion of electronics. Many, many universities are working on many, many projects. On-board equipment, outdoor equipment, Tempest, MSEC, military grades, Intel, you name it. So. That's why our system has been designed for to be with zero bottleneck and to consider at the end of the day, giving the right temperature to the electronics, collecting those calories we need to the liquid in order to be either evacuated or to be reused, but without at, ver at the very first, the spent of energy, okay, to produce the data. Because on an air cool data center, 60 to 70% is for the cooling, 30 to 40% is for the IT load. On an immersion for data center, the energy is 80% for the IT load, 20% for the cooling. For the same result at the end, data. This is the reason why we have created this entire business model. And avoiding the news of natural resources, air and water, to cool data. We need air and water. The biodiversity needs it. Electronic doesn't need it. So why do we want to go back to this? As a regulator, you go to the fundamental of what are the rules, application of those, and obviously every single government, when there is something new coming out, goes to the regulator. What do you think of it? Can we use it? It is applicable within our space. So the question is, let's go back, what is a data center? What is a data center? Energy. Of course it's energy, but what is a data center? It's electronics, it's cooling electronics. Do we agree on that? Come on, guys, don't leave me alone. I'm almost done, I promise. I will, I, will, I will set you free. It's a beautiful weather out there. So electronics basically have the following problem. Because imagine that you have this hotspot here. When you have this component, when it's powered, 
is powered so then automatically it generates static electricity which attract dust because it's power because it's in the air it generates humidity which lead to corrosion oxidation and because it's in the air temperature swing and make an equal vibration because obviously there is a fan and there is an air circulation around you take the same electronic component you put it into the liquid you solve all those problems because all those problems don't occur anymore so we are changing completely the paradigm of electronics matter of fact when i was uh, at the uh, at the itu speaking jennifer asked me to come to an event talking about greening your house addressing the environmental footprint of digital technology what a subject to be honest with you i didn't know the way i'm going to be starting speaking about this but right before me it was a lady and that lady was from who and she talked about a problem that we are all concerned with the digitization in 2021 only 17 percent of the electronic is recycled one container out of three leaving Europe goes to Africa to be recycled. 31 million people are recycling. That's what I'm talking about when we speak about sustainability, when I speak about people, when we speak about responsibility of changing this paradigm. And those servers comes from here. It comes from the way we use electronics. Imagine that those people, what they do, they burn electronics. They burn the electronics to remove the conventional cutting on the top of the PCB and the fire retardant called the brominated in order to be able to take the materials out of it. All those conventional cutting and those brominated using our solution are not needed. That means that tomorrow we can have electronics to be 100% fully recycled using urban mining. Stop digging, just recycling electronics the way it is. Because the problem is, the way we are cooling it using air so we got the chance to to have the itu as a fantastic trampoline in 2019 itu awarded us to be the best use of ict global excellence award i don't know how the hell this happened and i'm still surprised today that i'm here even here speaking but i'm very pleased because i'm just realizing that government need competency and when they need competency they find those competency where in the university that's what we created our business model like this. Then they went to the regulator to say, well, how do this apply to the telecom world, to the data world, and what about energy? And when we circled, the back, when we circled or said the, the, the world things together, we realized that ITU federate 42 UN agencies, and in the same time, we speak about SDGs. SDGs is a common sense. We should do all business based on SDGs. I didn't realize that myself before we realize that we are in fact doing the 17 goal of the SDGs. Well, that's called eco-conservation. That's called environmental conservation. Economically speaking, imagine today on a data center, 500 kilowatts data center, 270 square meters, 115 racks. 270 square meters, 106 DTM system, 4.08 megawatts. Half size, no data center infrastructures. That's what Immersion 4 is basically offering today to the market. And all of that being able to build product at the right place. We got all those awards, but this is not about us. It is about the technology and what this technology can be done. Well, it's nice to have it, but it's better if we share. It's better if we share the value chain. It's better if we have a solution that doesn't have any CO2, any greenhouse, any water consumption. We can reduce the carbon footprint by building the product locally in order to have a quicker access to the market to reduce the carbon footprint itself. Then in that case, now we are talking about, because in that case, carbon footprint, which is making Tesla profitable, make even immersion for more accessible. And we can share that by building that all around. So those are the, what the experts said. We have a preferred partner, Hewlett Packard, but we are not exclusive. We can welcome any brand, any electronics under any format. Thanks to the ITU, we're also part of the AI for Good program. But more than AI, the for good is better. And the for good is the real thing. Because at the end of the day, we are here for good. This planet is burning. We're still burning energy. So it's maybe time to do some things about it.
Well, there it is. Simple as that. Got the speech? Take my speech in one sentence. Ice coolant from immersion flow on our system to electronics, air and water to us, to the biodiversity, and everybody is happy. People have the tendency to say, well, you know, people in Africa are very late. They need to be developed. They need to be digital. They need to get there. Well, first of all, people in Africa don't live the way we do, luckily. And in fact, you're not late. You're just on time. You're just on time to make the right choice, to use the right technology. We have been selected to be part of the Smart Africa project, and we are very proud and very honored to be on it. And uh, if we use this, you will not have to upgrade your grid, to build more energy, to borrow money in order to deliver energy to data centers. You will have basically those energy for those people, for your people. And you can give the right amount of energy to the data center to what that electronics deserve. And I'm using the term deserve. Like the air and water are what we deserve because without it we are nothing. Thank you for your attention. Sorry for speaking so long. At your disposal.